You're tuned to Radio Kidnap as the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is a programme called... The Wonderful World of Wardini Books. And our pleasure, as always, to have in the studio, fresh from a big sojourn in Auckland, the big <laughs> yeah, smoke. The big smoke. Was that good? Yeah, it was brilliant. We saw the inside of the ASB arena, some ver- burger vans, walked across the park to go home, and that was it for you four days. And we can. sold lots of books. Armageddon. That's it. You cannot beat a good burger. No, it was brilliant. Do you know what it had in it? It had a hash brown in it. Oh, yum. And pineapple and cheese and onions. And it was amazing. I had one a day for four days. <laughs> now, now, I know that you're English and I'm English, but I had not heard of this before. I bumped into someone in the uh, supermarket uh, the other weekend, and they said they were going home to have a pie sandwich. Have you heard of pie sandwiches? I have heard of a pie sandwich. I don't think... She said it was a very English thing. Mm, I don't know. Is it maybe more modern English than mm, you and I? We've been out of the game for a while now, Ken. Who would have a pie sandwich? I don't know. That's why we came <laughs> over here. <laughs> I would like a hash brown sandwich, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, we've got three great books to have a look at, and the first one is a kid's book, and it's mm. called Sir Singlet. Sir Singlet. It's by Dawn McMillan, and it's illustrated by Ross Kinnaird, and they are the genius people behind I Need a New Bum. Oh, right. Yes, probably I remember that one. talked about before. And there's a sequel to that called I've Broken My Bum, and she's also written Dr Grundy's Undies. Yeah. So there's a theme emerging <laughs> yes, here. And in Sir Singlet, the first thing that we see is um, it's a story told by a young boy. Let me introduce Sir Singlet of great fame Sir Singlet is my uncle but how did he get his name so that's what we're going to find out so um, so he's tall and handsome mm. and classy and handsome and very well dressed and even the horse is very I well dressed guy, but his undies are just like leave, leaving a lot to be <laughs> desired there's always a picture like that in yeah. these books of a bum yes. a shiny bum they're yes. generally shiny and a bit rosy Um, So he's got saggy knickers, boring red stockings and a boring white tunic and it's very, very sad. So he decides he's going to develop a beautiful underwear range. So so they're going to have socks and all sorts of things, quite beautiful, colourful. It is colourful, isn't it? Yeah, all sorts of things with eyes, socks with eyes on, underwear with eyes on and teeth and snakes and stuff like that. But just when the undies and socks were all done, the king called a battle, a war to be won. War! Tough luck. Uncle was about to launch nightwear. Did you get it? Did yes, you get it? I get it. Yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> so anyway, but off they go. So he's launched nightwear and it's all very beautiful. But it's not going to go well for the king's army and things are looking really, really bad. And then what happens is they ran. The, the enemies run away. Why? Because I think someone has shown their underwear. Ta-da! Yeah, <laughs> and they're just like, what the hell is yeah, that? That's obviously a demon from underneath. It's very And ferocious. we're all going to run away. And I like the colour, and I like the humour, and a bit of rhyme, and just the fact that you can battle with fun. And, yes, indeed. Yeah. And it's amazing how colour sells it to little kids, isn't it? They love yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. And anything with a bum in it as well. A nice yeah, shiny, rosy right. bum. <laughs> very nice. And our next book is called The Constant Rabbit. Yeah, it's Jasper Ford. And I really like him. He does really literary, clever, weird fiction. So it's kind of fantasy. But as you read it, you think, well, no, that could happen. So in this one, there's been an anthropological event. Hmm. Nobody knows why it happened, but it happened. We're in the near future here. And rabbits are the subject of this anthropological logical event and they are now as tall if not taller than human beings and they stand upright and they wear clothes and they talk and they're a bit cleverer wow, than humans is, as well yes that is but what do the humans do you know for the first couple of years it's like oh this is a cool event you know we could learn a lot from the rabbits and then of course no we're gonna we're gonna put them all in warrens and we're yeah. gonna um, round them up round them up that kind of yeah. thing and what happens in this one is there's a very mild-mannered chap who lives in a village and he works at it's Rabcon or something. It's like the rabbit, you know, keeping an eye on the rabbits organized department of the government. And he um, can recognize one rabbit, distinguish one rabbit from another. So he's got a super skill there because apparently not many humans can do it. And rabbits aren't very good at recognizing one human from another. So they'd know by my voice maybe that yes. it was me. But if they just walked into a room now, they wouldn't be able to tell which one was Lou or Ken, even though they've met us lots of times. Yes, indeed. So, um, so he does the rabbit distinguishing thing but 
A rabbit that he went to university with many years before suddenly turns up again in his life, a female rabbit. And there's kind of a weird attraction between them. <laughs> and of course that's illegal, yes. rabbit-human yes. relations, for I all sorts so, yes. of reasons. Can't understand why. So that's quite um, uncomfortable, that, that sort of rabbit-human attraction. So this rabbit family move into the village, and of course the villagers are up in arms, we don't want a dirty rabbit family in our village, even though it's Major Rabbit and he's fought in this war and he's a war hero and all this kind of thing. So... Um, it, it gently is, is a bit of satire of poking fun at this is how people behave when an unusual thing mm, comes into their yes. environment. You know, so it might be immigrants of some Indeed. description or, you know, anybody that's a bit different. Um, and the disinformation, which is a big thing at the moment, isn't it? Fake yes, news fake and all that news. kind of thing. So the disinformation that is fed through um, certain government departments, maybe, to, to colour people's view of things. Yeah. So it's set in on the Herefordshire Wales border and they're going to create a mega warren where all the rabbits are going to go. And of course the rabbits will all go peacefully, but if they don't, Look out. there'll be trouble. Yeah, so it's like which side of the fence yeah. are you on? So what's going to happen when we turn that last page? What message are we going to take away from that book? It's a bit, it's a bit of a sad ending, actually. I won't spoil it for no. anybody, but... Um, I don't know if humans learn very much in the end. Because, <laughs> you know, the, me the message is there is, uh, you know, the rabbit way. They talk about the rabbit way. And it's quite lovely, you know, because you live in groups and you look out for one mm. another and you grow your food and, and they're vegeta vegetarians. And that's another thing that humans go, vegetarians are going to take over. Um, we'll all be vegan. And it'll be terrible. Um, <laughs> yes, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's one of those beautiful books where it's funny and it's got a really rollicking, thumping good plot. There's yeah. lots of rabbit puns in here. Um, yeah, but, but yeah. seeing the human condition through somebody else's eyes. Is it going to appeal to a certain type of person? I mean, you said it was a bit weird. Is it going to, mm. be, to be a bit weird to read it? I think you have to, you have, to have, have the ability to think left field a little yes. and be surprised by something. But, you know, it's really well written, so it is more on the literary side. It's clever. Yeah, very good. Okay, and the last book we're going to talk about today is None Shall Sleep. Sounds like a movie, a horror movie. Could be the most amazing movie. So None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie is a young adult novel, but you'd have to be interested in murder mysteries and serial killers and about 14 or over mm. because it does get quite full on. Who isn't interested in those? Who isn't interested in this? And I couldn't put it down, Ken. We went to Armageddon and I was supposed to be taking the money and, you know, selling the books and Gareth's all dressed up in his yeah. steampunk gear <laughs> doing the, the thing. And I'm reading my book and he kept having to go, Louise, Louise! Because <laughs> I was so immersed in it. So we have uh, a young lady called Emma and she's 18 and she is studying psychology at university but she was the only survivor of a particularly nasty serial killer mm. so she she got away she's the one that got away she's got survivor's guilt and she's really quite screwed up about it she's quite broken inside but she's learning how to deal with her new self and she's got a buzz cut and you find out why later on and she's very driven keeps herself very fit um, studying psychology wants to know what's going on in the minds of people that do stuff like that and she is approached by an FBI agent who would like he's got this brilliant idea that there are teen serial killers that they've got incarcerated mm. but they can't reach them they're the grown-up FBI people's but if you got a teenager to go in and interview them they might have more of a rapport and get a response yes. from these kids and then you can track the mind of a serial killer from when they're really young so he tries to recruit her and tells her there's going to be a department, but the department is her and one other guy, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> who is also is a young lad, he's about the same age as her, and he's just started at some kind of, I don't know, police college thing, because his father was a police officer and his father was murdered by a very notorious, scary teenage serial killer called Simon Gutmanson, who is incarcerated in this amazing criminal, um, what do you call it, the criminal prison oh yes sort of like a high-tech prison yeah, yeah. But, you know he's, he's kind of like a Hannibal Lecter yeah so Simon Gutmanson is in this beautiful it's a converted gothic hall or something mm. and he's in the chapel and there's stained glass and he's in a cage in the yeah, middle right. of it and there's one guy that uses pincers to pass him things through the bars <laughs> and there's barriers yes. all around the cage it's very Hannibal yes. Lecter so um, they have to pick the minds of this Simon Gutmanson Emma and Travis is the boy's name to, to 
to get clues to they're only supposed to work on cold cases but then there turns out that there are some connections between simon and a really nasty serial killer that's currently attacking mm. people and escalating and the scenes of what he does you just go whoa that's pretty full on yeah. so it's not for the faint of heart or people whose <laughs> stomachs turn at the sight of an entrail yeah so um yeah these are two teenagers and they've got their department and it's very um it reminds me of the x-files you know where they get their department because they're really important but they're kind of embarrassing yes so they indeed. put them in the basement emma and travis <laughs> and they work a bit with agent cooper and it's full on what? and it's serial killer and exciting and i couldn't put it down 10 out of 10 by the sound of it yeah yeah, read and, it so quickly and also by the sound of it going to appeal to more than young readers yeah so in the shop we've put it in the young adult and we've put it in the adult section mm. because a really really strong pacey young adult novel is just as good yeah. for grown-ups to read and if we want to get in these wonderful books where do we get them yeah we're at Waldini books we're 16 tomato road havelock north we are 44 hastings street napier and we are waldini.co.nz yes you are and as always my pleasure you look after yourself talk to same time same place next week cool thanks ken